Hi guys, in this video we'll be looking at RNA, the structure of RNA, comparing DNA to RNA, and then we'll finish with a summary. So RNA is another type of nucleic acid which falls into the same family as DNA, but it has a few differences. So first of all, we're just going to run through a few important points about RNA before we delve into more details. So as we've said, as well as DNA, another important nucleic acid that you find in cells is ribonucleic acid, or RNA. So remember, DNA was named very similarly, but slightly different. DNA stood for deoxyribonucleic acid, whereas RNA stands for just ribonucleic acid. The big difference being that the DNA has a sugar which is deoxygenated, and ribonucleic acid is not deoxygenated. But we'll get to that in a moment. So here's just a general image of RNA, and you might notice that it still looks very similar to DNA, but it actually only has one strand, as opposed to DNA, which has two strands. So RNA has very different roles to DNA as its job in terms of protein synthesis and functioning of the cell, but these roles are still just as important as DNA. So one of the most important functions that it has is it acts more as a messenger molecule rather than just a set of instructions. It transfers the information that DNA has within itself to manufacturing proteins within cells. So remember the function of DNA, which is here, is to store all of the genetic information and instructions that help us develop ourselves in terms of structure and function. It builds up the organism's structure and all the physical appearances, and it also dictates which proteins are made, where they go, and what they do, and the shape of the proteins too. But the DNA molecule is so large when it resides in the nucleus of the cell, it's very hard to move around. So the RNA acts as a sort of messenger to take information out to the cell so that it can start actually making this stuff. So DNA basically sends its information out via a message, which is the RNA, and then the RNA takes this information from the DNA to the machinery in the cell, which then makes proteins. So the RNA is kind of like a letter sending information from one place to another without actually taking the instructions themselves because that would be inappropriate and inefficient. But the RNA also has another role. It helps the regulation and the synthesis of proteins. So not only does it carry information out to the cell, but it has a lot of roles in making proteins, so manufacture of proteins, and also regulating how they are made as well and how they fold up to the right shape. So we'll go into protein synthesis in more detail in other videos, but here's just an image indicating that we've got these strands of RNA which act as the messengers here. So there's a couple here. And this structure is also made of RNA, but it's called a ribosome, and it's made of slightly different types of RNA. So it has roles in making proteins at the ribosome and also regulating how these proteins function and the kind of shape of these proteins as well. So it has this role which is also essential. So DNA and RNA do fall into the same family and therefore they have some similar features. DNA and RNA are both polynucleotides and again this means that it's a polymer of lots and lots of nucleotide monomers joined together. So just to recap on what this means we've got individual nucleotides here so nucleotides, or mononucleotides, refer to a single nucleotide just on its own. And in other videos we've gone through the detailed structure of the nucleotide itself. So as they lie separately, they're just mononucleotides, if they all were added together into a chain via condensation reactions, we would end up with one single chain of nucleotides known as a polynucleotide. And both DNA and RNA contain polynucleotides. So let's look into more detail about the actual structure of RNA and what the molecule looks like. So again, there will be similarities with DNA because they're both nucleic acids, and as we've just said, they're both made from polynucleotides, but there are important differences and features found in RNA that aren't in DNA. So the main difference is that RNA is actually composed of only one polynucleotide chain, so we call it single-stranded, whereas DNA is actually known as being double-stranded. So this is RNA. And as you can see, there's one chain of polynucleotides just going round and round on its own. It's not joined to another chain. So we call that single-stranded. Whereas DNA, remember it had that double helix shape where there were two strands of polynucleotides almost kind of dancing around each other along this common axis. So DNA, we would call double-stranded. So that's one of the most important differences that you'll pick up. As well as this, the RNA polynucleotides tend to be a lot shorter than the DNA ones. So when you look at DNA, which holds all of the genetic information in the cell, it's very, very long. In fact, one interesting fact is if you were to take all the DNA in one cell of a human and lay it out from end to end, although it would be very, very thin, it actually stretches out to two meters. So DNA is very, very long, 
that RNA, which carries information out to the cell from the DNA, is actually very, very short. It's a lot shorter in length and has a lot fewer bases along its length. So RNA is much shorter. Looking at more detail into the RNA molecules itself, or the nucleotides, these differ slightly from DNA. So the main factor to remember is that the nucleotides in all types of polynucleotide are generally following the same format. Remember we have a phosphate group joined to a pento sugar, which is the shape of a pentagon. We then have an organic base attached to that as well. So this is found in both DNA and RNA. But actually what differs is some of the details within the nucleotide itself. So the pento sugar found in RNA is actually ribose, whereas in DNA it was known as deoxyribose. So in RNA it's simply called ribose, and this is because it's a type of sugar which is indicated here. So we've got this general pentagonal shape of the sugar, as you can recognise. We've got five carbons, which indicates that it's a pentose. And then down here on carbon number two, or the bottom right carbon, you can see that we've got an OH group. So we've got an oxygen present in that group. But in DNA, we call the sugar deoxyribose, because this ribose sugar actually is missing this oxygen. So if you see this sugar without the O, then it must be the deoxyribose that you find in DNA. But in RNA, it has the oxygen present, and so we call it ribose. As well as this, not only does the sugar differ, but some of the nitrogen-containing organic bases differ as well. We still have guanine, which is G, adenine, which is A, and cytosine, which is C, just like in DNA. But we also have, instead of thymine, we have uracil. This is just another type of nucleotide with a different set of atoms. So for DNA, we have adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine. In RNA, we have adenine, guanine, cytosine, and uracil. So for RNA, we replace thymine with uracil. And this pairs up in the same way as well. So here the bases would be guanine, adenine, cytosine, and uracil. There's no thymine found in RNA. So make sure you understand that difference. In the same way that DNA works, the guanine and the adenine are the purine bases, and the purine bases are the large ones, so they have two carbon rings and makes them larger than the other two types of bases. So here we've got guanine on the left with its two rings, and we've got adenine on the right again with its two rings. So these are the two purine bases. And remember, these two purine bases are found in both DNA and RNA. Cytosine and uracil are the two pyrimidine bases found in RNA, and these are the smaller bases. So for DNA, the cytosine and the thymine were both pyrimidine. But in RNA, the thymine has been replaced by uracil, so now the cytosine and the uracil are both the pyrimidine bases. So this is the uracil here. So again, these are smaller with one single carbon ring. So you can see that there are several similarities between DNA and RNA, but with a few subtle changes. But the complementary base pairing still works in the same way. In RNA, we obviously have the bases A, G, C, and U. G still binds to C as a base, but A, instead of T, now binds to U. So A binds to U. In DNA, we obviously just had A, G, C, and T, where G still bound to C, but A bound to T instead. So all that's changed is that the U replaces the T for RNA. It's really important, for example, that you're able to compare DNA and RNA and notice some of the subtle differences between them. But you can summarise them in a table if it helps your revision. So let's talk about the number of strands. We've talked about how DNA is a double helix with two strands, or two polynucleotides, wrapped around each other, whereas RNA only has one strand, so it's single-stranded. DNA is very, very long. As we've said, it has to pack into all cells, but it is a huge molecule. RNA, however, is relatively short and only acts as a messenger, and actually it doesn't last very long in the cell. The pento sugar in DNA is deoxyribose, hence the D for DNA, and that's missing an oxygen atom. In RNA, it's simply ribose, and it has the oxygen atom present there as well. That's why it's called RNA, because of the R for ribose. The bases in DNA are G for guanine, A for adenine, C for cytosine, and T for thymine. In RNA, they have the same bases, except uracil replaces thymine. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing A-level biology resource, Join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap revised smiley face, and together, let's make A-level biology a walk in the park.